used to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal parts about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pin code, 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 pin But you can't catch me! I think it's time to have some speeding tickets. They have so much they could probably power the whole spacecraft! But now you're in! <laughs> so, what did I say about fines? Yeah, whatever. Don't worry about it. And what about the vase from yesterday? Well, yeah. I must inform you, my friends, that you're far too infantile. Your messing around knows no bounds. Info what? Simply put, your behavior is very immature. It's just that we know how to have fun, and you don't. So you and your what do you call it, you catch my drift. Well, if you ask me, somebody needs to grow up. What do you mean? Come on, Chico's even got a white hair already. Huh? <gasps> well. Physical features, I'm afraid, are not a sign of maturity. How does one distinguish an adult from a child? It would seem that the answer is obvious. And if you remove all external differences, how will they differ? The child doesn't know how to restrain himself and is only interested in his immediate desires. And he doesn't think ahead or care very much at all about the future. But it's easy to give in to emotions. Children behave themselves in accordance with their desires and mood without thinking about others. They stand out with their rebelliousness and overplaying. The adult is able to control emotions and is able to control his mood. He can make his own decisions and change his way of life. This property is called autonomy. But probably the most important property of an adult is responsibility. He himself is responsible for his actions and doesn't blame anyone for his mistakes. Now, can you see the difference between an adult and a child? The fact that adults are... Boring? <laughs> Here, pedagogy is the science of education. Maybe this will help you, finally. <laughs> uh. Chico! Chico! Hey, wake up! Holy carrots! You're not like Barry! You don't need to go into hibernation! Get off! Get off! If you, if I wake up, you'll definitely drag me into something. Since when did you become such a square? What, were you bitten by an adult? <laughs> Get up! <laughs> I just realized something really cool. Adults, children, it's all conventions. It was all specially invented so that one group could look down on others. Look, how old do you think Olga is? To be honest, I never even thought about it. You see? Maybe you're even older than she is. Is this about the white hair again? I just mean that age doesn't matter. It's just that some are boring and then there's fun guys like us. But now I know what we can do about it. Ah, 
here. Earth for inquisitiveness. To be honest, I always prefer detective stories. No time for reading, time for action. Look, extracts with a rejuvenating effect. By tomorrow, our boring bobs will have turned into cheerful and carefree info infia Well, you you feel me, right? Are you sure this will work? If we don't try, we'll never find out. So, a little bit of a little bit of this, and uh, maybe some of this. Um. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's go. Uh huh. Oh, and. <sighs> Boy, I wouldn't want to upset our conspirators, but the book they use is full of completely unscientific nonsense. I'll give them a rejuvenating effect in a minute. I propose a more pedagogical approach to play along. Let them okay. look at themselves from Is the outside. Right you see, that'll teach them a lesson. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and why aren't you eating? Is it too salty? Yeah, eat, eat. Don't be distracted. We're just not hungry. <laughs> no appetite at all. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> it's finger licking. And would you believe my back is better? This soup is not only delicious, it's also healing. I'm also feeling an incredible burst of energy! <laughs> Let's have a game of catch a monkey! <laughs> Burning a few calories certainly won't hurt anyone! Cheers, me! <laughs> <laughs> Catch me! <laughs> Whoa! Can't catch me! <laughs> Don't be boring! <laughs> what does this do? What does that do? <laughs> Party light! Party light! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Look out! Huh. <laughs> Try again! I'm stronger than you think! <laughs> 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 Hooray! It worked! <gasps> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about! <laughs> Look at me! Look at me! I'm a fireman! I'm a fireman! <laughs> uh, do you think we overdid it with the ghost? <laughs> Just how it should be! Who's for hide and seek? Three, four, five! <laughs> what are you waiting for? Start searching! It's hide and seek! Look, there's Olga! That's not fair! Why am I first? <laughs> cartoons! I want cartoons! Put on cartoons! I don't want cartoons! I want a story! Oh, holy carrots! Holy wow. carrots! Holy carrots! Holy carrots! Holy carrots! Holy carrots! Watch what you say in front of the children. So what do we do now? Prepare an extract of adulthood? Enough experiments already. We'll have to grow up ourselves. In order to become an adult, it's not enough to just celebrate your birthday every year. In doing so, you still need to work hard on yourself. You need to learn how to behave properly and not indulge in things that are not appropriate at all. It's necessary to have knowledge, and the more diverse, the better. A person cannot call himself an adult if he absolutely does not understand anything and he should always listen to the opinion of another more experienced person. <laughs> and he won't throw tantrums every time something doesn't work out for him. Adults are responsible for each step and every word spoken. An adult is one who can restrain emotions and move towards their clearly stated goals.
<laughs> I wonder how long our pedagogical experiment will last. I don't know, but for now it's very amusing. Well, just to make sure, I say we keep it going for a couple more days. <laughs> Maybe later this evening, when everyone's gone to bed? Oh, game of chess? Uh, I wish I could, but I'm just so tired that I'm ready to crash. It looks oh, like oh, we're gonna have to start yeah. issuing speeding tickets. How's that? Oh, oh come on. It's just a couple of plates. It's lucky. Doubtfully lucky. <laughs> you're so boring. <laughs> and you're all far too infantile. <laughs> Info what? Hey, we never called you names. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Come on, then. Let's go to Nightingale Robbers. <laughs> oh, oh dearie me. <sighs> the younger generation is completely out of control. You don't play catchy monkey, don't listen to loud music. How can you be so boring? Yes, it's pretty obvious. Age. <laughs> Tomorrow, <laughs> these gumps will become more cheerful, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I told you we need to keep an eye on the younger ones. Wow, look at what they've thought of. Do you have a sense of deja vu? As if something very familiar's happening? Forget about those clever words, buddy. Tomorrow we'll have to return to childhood and teach these crazy youngins a lesson. Hello, everyone! This is the online show Shenanigans, and this is Crash. Do you hear those sounds? Those are the unmistakable vocal talents of our friend, and his name is Chico. Remember that name! Yeah, live singing and performing in general is not everyone's talent. Oh, people like it. We already have five likes. Six. Chico, you're so talented. And now we have proof from a whole bunch of people. What bunch of people? You what? Are you taking a video? And I'm still rolling now. Go ahead and wave to all your followers. <laughs> <laughs> Holy carrots! This now is you are the coolest cat on the whole Cut internet! Cut it out! Chico, <laughs> now you're a... a star! <laughs> uh, tell me, dear colleagues, what kind of star are we talking to? Sirius or Betelgeuse? Even better, Chico is now a musical internet sensation! Ah! <laughs> it's really not what you think. And now, if you excuse us, our star is a very busy schedule. Well, I never. Hello! Can you keep it down a little bit? Our Chico has to rehearse. Uh? We're making magic here. Hey, and I told him, what phosphates? Only natural. <laughs> Step aside, step aside! Oh, A star oh, is coming oh. through! <laughs> well, I never. So, for lunch, we're gonna need logman, graffiti rolls, fricassee, uh -huh. carpaccio, fo fogra. Huh? How much more do we have to wait for? More of an orderly line, please. Chico will be in the shower till the very evening. He's working on his image. You can go. Hmm. Chico, let's get to work. This all really isn't right. You're right. The acoustics here aren't right. Bruschetta, risotto, penne, oh. consomme. Her young people today, huh? They have no boundaries. Uh-huh. 
Here the acoustics are much better. Okay, we have rehearsals. If you could please give us a room. Well, I never. Gaspacho, falafel, and, and carrot cake. Ah, cake! Outrageous. Huh, well, who does he think he is, huh? This is hard for me to say, but Chico, how can I put this? He's losing touch with reality. You see? Exactly. But I think I know how we can sort this out. We all have our own needs, or put more simply, our own desires. But it isn't some magic genie that can help us make them real. Indeed, it is the famous American psychologist and founder of humanistic psychology, Adam Maslow. His proposition was to divide all our needs into five main categories. The first category is physiological needs, such as, for example, air, food, water, and sleep. The second is the need for safety and protection from pain and fear. Then there is the need to belong, including the desire for love and friendship. The fourth category is the need for recognition, that is, for prestige and self-esteem. And finally, the last category is the need for self-expression. It is also the need to seek to uncover your full potential. These five steps form the Pyramid of Needs, which is also known as the Maslow Pyramid. To move from the basic desire to eat up to personal self-improvement, it is necessary that all our other more basic needs are met first. When our desires are fulfilled, we automatically go up one step of the pyramid higher and higher until we reach the top. Obviously, Chico's behavior is connected to this need for recognition and self-realization. You see, he currently finds himself on the fourth step. But if we play up to our starry-eyed friend, then we will satisfy this need, and he will rise to the very top of the pyramid. Our star is sleeping. Isn't he wonderful? Quiet, guys. Don't push. Oh, looks like he's awake. <gasps> Good, Good morning! morning. morning Oh, did you hear the way he said that? Like an angel. Like a star. Hey, let's congratulate him! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That didn't work. That pyramid of yours doesn't seem to work. Well, it's just his need for recognition is beyond our modest capabilities. But if we did not manage to move Chico upwards, we'll just drop him down. Hmm, isn't that a bit radical? That's what I mean. Down to the lower steps of the pyramid of needs. Like I said, Maslow noticed the pattern. When basic needs are met, we begin to reach for higher needs. But the reverse effect is possible as soon as we are reminded of our basic needs and we go back down a step. The drop down a step is much faster. Anyone can slide down from the pyramid to the very bottom due to the unusual feeling of hunger. Simply put, when we want to eat, then we are no longer interested in any kind of self-realization. Therefore, alas, do not forget about your basic needs, even at the top of the pyramid. Otherwise, they will remind us of them all by themselves.
Interesting. So you mean you want to starve him? I'd prefer to call it going on an anti-star diet. Hey, if we're gonna starve, then it's better together. That way it's not so bad at the bottom of the pyramid. You're just gonna love my surprise! I hope this surprise has something to do with food. I haven't eaten all day. This is so much cooler! My tummy's rumbling. So well, what do you think? Uh, what's all this for? We're going to send you on a worldwide tour. It's time to take things to the next level. Now look what's happened to him. He's going on tour. Huh. Here we are, still waiting to eat, only because he won't calm down. Uh, well, no one said it would happen immediately. Yeah, I'm telling you, your pyramid thing doesn't work. Hmm. Maybe the superstar sickness can't be reversed. Hello, Earth! Once again, it's the online show shenanigans with your regular host, Crush! Congratulations to all Earthlings on the beginning of the world tour of the intergalactic celebrity, the uncomparable Chico! Don't you dare go anywhere! We're about to start! Chico, get ready. We're about to have a live stream. I'm starting the countdown to air. Three, two, one! Who does he think he is? We have to save little prickles. What are you doing? I'm saving Chico. Give it to me! I won't let you. Attention, engines disabled. We're just trying to pull out of the vicious circle of celebrity. What? Do you even ask me? I don't need any kind of celebrity. All I need is love and understanding from my friends. That's the middle step of the pyramid. My friend, why didn't you say that from the start? Well, don't go overboard. I think we're all happy with Chico's simple needs and desires. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe to my channel. It was a total shenanigan. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, and here are our fans. Huh? <laughs> 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 It's the bottom of the pyramid. Say what? Nothing. Just run. Oh, whoa. Oh, what a beauty. I agree. But if the golden ratio's proportions had been adhered to, then this work would have been a masterpiece. Say what? Oh, please, old chap, don't tell me that you've never heard of the golden ratio. Well, sure, I heard about it. I <laughs> uh, just kind of forgot about it. No worries. Let me remind you. What is beauty? A simpleton would say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder.
and he'd be wrong. Because true beauty should please not just the eye, but the brain as well. After all, any kind of harmony can be verified mathematically. For example, some of the world's most beautiful buildings have a height approximately one and a half times its lateral dimension. Or more specifically, 1.618 times. People long ago realized that the more details conform to this proportion, the more attractive the building would be. You can see an excellent example of this in the magnificent Parthenon, in which almost everything conforms to this ratio. Incidentally, it was in honor of one of the Parthenon's architects, Phidias, that they named this number, five. Even if it's more frequently referred to as the golden ratio. Look here, it just... Look here at how attractive this shelf becomes if we bring it into line with the golden ratio. Well, there it is, just as it should be. Gorgeous. It's a masterpiece. <laughs> Looks great. Ah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it didn't conform to the golden ratio anyway. I concur. This shelf is a piece of art in and of itself. We don't need to put something on top of it. But then what the heck do you need it for? Barry, wait a sec. Does this ratio work for everything? And everything, everything will look better? Naturally. Oh. Phenomenal. Help yourself. <laughs> oh, what have I done? <laughs> I completely uh, uh, forgot. Uh, All these are <laughs> defective. What's the matter with them? Now see for yourself. <laughs> There's no golden ratio. No worries, though. I'll just go make some new ones. <laughs> You'll be licking your fingers. <laughs> So, how do I look? Hey, are you sick or something? Don't you understand? This makeup is aligned with the golden ratio. It's perfect. Of course it is. It's obvious. Don't listen to him, lovey. It's so expressive. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry, Doco. What's the matter with you? My new glasses. Do you like them? Everything's in proportion. Let me guess. With the golden ratio. Uh-huh. Now I'll be able to see even better. Oh. Ah. Oh. Cool! Give me five! Have you all gone crazy with your golden ratio? The pastries were tasty as they were, probably. Rosa's much prettier without those blotches. And Chico's hitting all the corners now, poor devil. But how can you? Deny that ideal proportions are imperfect. That's just insane. <laughs> okay, relax. I understand why Barry is rejecting the golden ratio. <laughs> he just spends too much time with his disorganized nature. Look at this. Everything grows as it pleases in regards to length and width and doesn't conform to proper sizes whatsoever. It's true. Some sorts of savagery. I won't let you hurt my garden. There's no need for such extreme measures. <laughs> Nature can be helped to reach perfection. Now everything's perfect. How can you think it's right to mock nature that way? Look, it doesn't have any effect on Barry. Of course it doesn't. Ha, uh, our friend Barry doesn't conform to the golden ratio himself. <laughs> which was just what we needed to prove. That was all just a dream. Uh, maybe not. Bye. 
What what are you doing in my room? But this is my room. <laughs> oh, sorry. I mixed them up. I've been doing that really a lot lately. I wonder why. You see, there was a time, too, when I didn't know about the golden ratio. I discovered that my ears don't well, perfectly now, match the right proportions. Now I know everything there uh, is you know, to know about the, the golden, ratio. golden ratio. Oh, how awful. Yeah, yeah. I've been thinking that if I shorten them, I might be able to jump better. Of course. You don't need ESP. My friends, this day we will always celebrate as the day of the golden ratio, which will undoubtedly bring newfound harmony into all of our lives. Oh, yuck. Furthermore, I've discovered that the entire universe was designed on the principle of the golden ratio. Now that's cool. The number of phi's surrounds us everywhere. It's easy to find an object with the golden ratio by its beauty and harmony. Take, for example, an ordinary five-point star, a beautiful symbol which delights both the eye and mind. But at the same time, the lengths of its sections correspond to each other as per phi, which explains its beauty. This standard of beauty appeared long before man and was chosen by nature. We can prove it by looking at one most interesting shape. Let's take a rectangle, the relation of whose sides is equal to phi. Then we create a square inside and draw a quarter circle arc inside it. From the remaining rectangle, we make another square and continue the quarter circle arc and so on and so on until... Congratulations, we've just made a golden spiral. This spiral, in accordance with the golden ratio, can be found everywhere in nature. You can see it in the pearly nautilus mollusk's shell, or a sunflower, or in the eye of a hurricane. And hurricanes are nothing compared to entire spiral galaxies which conform to the golden ratio. My friends, that's how it came to be, ha, that man and nature both selected an identical standard for beauty, the golden ratio. Okay, huh. and now for the big surprise of this event, I have asked Daco to reprogram SphereJet so that it navigates along a flight path in accordance with the golden ratio. From here on in, our movement across space will merge us into perfection with the universe. Bravo! Awesome! That's awesome. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo! That's cool! Daco, is everything ready? Definitely. All that's left is to press this button. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. New trajectory coordinates have been calculated. The flight path has been changed. But what is that thing that's getting closer to us? But but that's the sun! Spearjet, turn around immediately! The command does not correspond with the new calculated coordinates and the number feet. I don't give a darn about Phi! We'll burn up! Ah. You understand nothing about harmony. Feet. Some kind of glitch in the program. I'll fix it right now. Give it to me. Operation discontinued.
Come on and pull. One, two. There's only a few hundred miles left to Earth. One, two. Maybe if we make the ropes in accordance with the golden ratio, the process wouldn't take as long. Cut it out with your ratio already. We're already golden enough. The proper proportion is one of moderation. Golden words. Golden. And heave. One, two. Heave. Ho. Heave. Ho. Heave. Not bad, eh? That'll be fine. No scratching or watching. Hostility level is low. Emotional background level. Have some of that. Bon appetit. And have some of that. Hostility level above average. Emotion excitement. Yeah, yo, Sabrina. Earthlings have an unidentified weapon. Prepare to open fire on target. False alarm. My little smoochy coochie means. My little cutie, smoochy cutie, woody, on the Hostility level zero. Cutie, Emotion, love. <laughs> Work time is over. Return to your compartments. Work time is over. Return to your compartments. Hostility level zero. Emotion, love. Emotion, love. Information brief. Emotions are a psychic process in terrestrial organisms, reflecting their evaluative attitude to existing or possible potential situations. It manifests itself in erratic external behavior. All of Pluto's inhabitants have been relieved of this dangerous function for the last several thousand years. Most researchers agree that fundamentally most Earthlings are pre-programmed with a small number of emotions, joy, fear, anger, curiosity, resentment, and disgust. Any other emotions that appear are acquired through a process of learning or through the unconscious copying of environmental behaviors. In this instance, the expression of emotion with different cultures of Earthlings is practically the same. Strong emotions activate the nervous system, which is accompanied by a change in the work of internal organs, as well as increased or a weakened brain and physical activity. Similarly, the emotional state significantly changes the assessment of reality. Because of the obvious harm to life and work, any emotions for all Plutonians are strictly forbidden. End of information. Start of the work time. Go to your workplace. Start of the work time.
sometimes, anytime, but yoga has a timetable. I think I've caught an alien. I know your little pranks. I bet you're hidden some little crackers in there. My pranks? You're the prankster around here. Ha ha! There's an alien. Hey, wait! Grab him! Stop! Uh, Who are your friends? Don't let him get away! <laughs> 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 And now, Sirsas and the... Hostility is zero. Emotion 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 is zero. Looks like your schnooky really has disappeared. Maybe it was taken by that alien that we nearly caught. I... Why do we have feelings? Like said... I don't want to feel this. I'm just in so much... pain. Feelings and emotions are just a part of us, and there's nothing that can be done about it. It would be better if I just didn't feel anything at all. Why do we need emotions at all? Hmm, that's a good question. On the one hand, emotions help us achieve our goals and better cope with work. Not to mention other joys. But on the other hand, they have the opposite effect, which makes emotions completely useless and even harmful. So, what are they for? After all, it would seem a world without emotions would be much easier and more effective. But this is not so. Psychology says that without emotions, we would not be able to do anything at all. Every one of us is programmed to do only that which will help him avoid grief or make him happy. Or to help others. Create something new and just enjoy life. At the dawn of civilization, reflexes, instincts, and emotions helped our ancestors survive and develop. 
reflexes, and instincts saved us from danger and helped us overcome any challenges. And emotions helped us understand that the chosen action was correct and eventually gave meaning to what was going on. Many years have passed since then, and it is generally accepted that now our actions are controlled by the intellect. But in actual fact, intellect only helps us choose a course in the world of emotions to avoid sadness and achieve joy. Although sometimes things happen which are beyond our control. And what do we do in these cases? Unfortunately, you can't be happy all the time. Although, being miserable all the time doesn't really work either. That means we just have to wait. Warning, emotions detected. Warning, emotions detected. Warning, emotions detected. Warning, emotions detected. Remotely similar. Why are you jumping around? Like flying sharks or some other kind of heebie-jeebie I get. But a monkey? A monkey. What's the difference? <sighs> Here. I recommend reading this before bed so you have normal nightmares and not about weird monkeys. Hm. Kids today. Thanks. But no thanks. I've decided I'm not going to sleep anymore. Will you help? You got it. No sleeping! <sighs> awake, awake, awake! <laughs> nope, uh, not a record! One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two! Left, right, left, right, left, right! Okay, two minute break! And no sleep! <sighs> You're being ridiculous. <laughs> no sleep at all? Yeah, what about it? Nothing good <laughs> will come of it. Nobody's exactly sure why nature invented sleep. After all, because of it, we spend a third of our life motionless, helpless and hungry. But it's essential for every living animal. Wow, a third of our life's been sleeping? <laughs> It'd be better if we spent that time doing something more useful. <laughs> well, you can try, of course, but you won't make it too long, I'm afraid, because it's only while we sleep that we get fully fledged rest. It's because of that that the first signs of being tired is drowsiness. I can relax without falling asleep. How about I just sit down and rest a little bit? But it won't work. <laughs> Staying awake too long can become true torture for us. If you overdo it with the insomnia, then you might not wake up at all. 
Not to mention all the very beneficial and healthy processes other than just rest. For example, <laughs> lymphocytes become more active, which means our bodies can fight Woo! illnesses better. Our growth hormones also work harder to help us regenerate, which means we truly grow in our sleep. We still have a lot to understand about sleep, but we can state without hesitation that sleep is good. The healthy sleep calms and refreshes us and gives us more strength and energy. Sleeping is living. If it's not possible to avoid your meeting with danger, then that means we need to go on the offensive. Next time you encounter this monkey, make a ferocious face and attack using the fighting style of the attack rabbit. Chico, what are you looking at? Are you even listening to me? Uh, I can't even control my own dreams. I don't even realize that I'm asleep until I wake up. Hmm, that's a problem. Control your dreams? Ha! Huh, it couldn't be easier. But first, some background information. Sleep consists of several separate stages. The main ones are called NREM and REM sleep. They alternate between themselves approximately five times a night. Enren sits in first as breathing slows down and our pulse decreases. During this stage, dreams are faint and unmemorable. Enrem sleep is divided into four parts. The first two are called surface slow sleep, while the next two are deep slow sleep. To the ordinary observer, there's no visible difference, of course, except perhaps that sleepwalkers may arise during deep NREM sleep. After non-REM sleep, REM sleep begins, and it can last as long as five to ten minutes. We continue sleeping, but our brains start working too. It starts putting away into storage all the information we accumulated throughout the day. REM sleep is further distinguished by the fact that our eyes continue moving, which is what REM sleep is an abbreviation for, rapid eye movement. It's during this phase of sleep that we see the most vivid and memorable dreams. So if you want to try and learn to control your dreams, <laughs> then it would be better to do so during REM sleep. But how can we do this? Yoga and meditation. After half a year's training, you'll be right. <laughs> half a year? Chico! You can stop with the meditation. There's a better way. Wake up, Chico! Look what I dug up in the spheroscope! Managing your sleep is very simple. You just need to understand that you are sleeping. We experience our most vivid dreams during this... What is it called? During REM sleep. Right, that's it. That's when our closed eyes are still moving quickly back and forth. I think there's even a scientific term for it. Sleep beepers. There's no such term. That means I just made it up. Anyway, you need to wear a special device which registers your eyes sleep peeping and then triggers this device to emit a special audio sound. But then I'll wake up. You won't wake up. This is a special signal. You'll hear it in your dream and understand that you're dreaming. All the rest is just mechanics. In short, I made an experimental model just for you. Use it and good luck. So I need to sleep wearing that. Would you prefer meditating for half a year? Don't forget, when you hear the bells, that means you're in a dream. Well, good night. It looks like I'm dreaming. Well, that's it, monkey. Now I'm really angry. 
Now we'll see who's who here. You must immediately leave the territory of this dream. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's useless. No matter what I do, she's stronger and trickier. But it's still your dream, which means it's your choice whether to make her more mischievous or friendly. What do you mean? Well, why don't you try befriending the little rascal? Do you want a bauble? Yes. <laughs> Pizza? Chico? <laughs> Chico the Hedgehog! <laughs> <laughs> Holy carrots! It's real contact! A meeting of two civilizations! Somebody pinch me! 